ESA, NASA, CSA and the web teams have just released another stunning image. This time it's of a nebula that's really close by. Living in the Large Magellanic Cloud, the Tarantula Nebula is a stellar nursery that's just 161,000 light years from us and Webb has seen thousands of previously unseen young stars in its web. Arachnophobics, look away now. The data for this image was actually taken back in July 2022 and was a candidate to be one of the very first images released by JWST, but it got cut because there was too much awesomeness for one day. Unfortunately, this was one of the images to hit the cutting room floor, but now we have it and it was worth the wait. Officially, this nebula is called 30 Doradus, but it's affectionately called the Tarantula Nebula due to the web-like structures we can see here. It's annoying that the Webb telescope has imaged a stellar web, but I'm sure you're all smart enough to know what I'm talking about here. The nebula is a huge cloud of dust and gas, and this one stretches across an impressive 340 light years and is the largest and brightest star forming region in the local group of galaxies near us. The Tarantula Nebula lives in the LMC, the Large Magellanic Cloud. That's one of the dwarf satellite galaxies that orbits the Milky Way. In this zoom in, you can see the moment we switch to the web image because the image gets so much crisper. This is a stellar nursery, forging thousands of new stars out of the gas that comprises the nebula. Excitingly for us, three of Webb's instruments were pointed at this nebula, so we've got two images and a spectrum of it. In this first one, taken by NERCAM in near infrared light, we can see so much luscious detail. This silk line tarantula's home hosts many young stars. These glow bright blue in the center of the image, and around these young stars, mostly to the left, we see a cavity being carved out of the gas. This cavity is caused by intense, blistering radiation from the young stars eroding away the gas of the nebula. Only the densest regions resist the erosion, and even here we see some embedded stars peeping through. These do look redder, shrouded in dust, but are visible due to the incredible NERCAM resolution. In these dense regions, we also see some gorgeous structures forming, from pillars to bubbles, and protostars will be forming in these regions, waiting to fully form, emerge from the dust bath, and start contributing to shaping the nebula. Near the top of the cavity, we have a bright, older star that shows the classic eight legs of Webb's diffraction spikes. And above this, we see a beautiful bubble in the dust. This is a new cavity starting to form as stars within this region blow their powerful stellar winds and erode the gas away. Away from the younger stars, the cooler dust that isn't being blasted by radiation takes on a redder colour. This region is full of complex hydrocarbons and will likely go on to form future stars. Additionally, as with all JWST images, the background of this one is full of distant galaxies, and it's always worth downloading the full resolution versions of these images to appreciate all of these galaxies and all of the structure in the nebula too. There's a link that will let you find that image for yourself in the description below. Let's now switch to the Miri image. This is taken in longer, mid-infrared wavelengths of light and has quite a different appearance. The stars all fade away, which is expected because stars are always fainter in longer wavelengths of light. But the cooler dust and gas of the nebula glows brighter here. The points of light in the cloud are young protostars still forming. These will continue to grow and eventually carve away this gas too into a cavity. This is where the hydrocarbons mentioned earlier live, here lighting up in blue and purple. You might also notice that this one seems less sharp in terms of image quality than the NERCAM image. This is always the case when you switch to longer wavelengths of light. The longer the wavelength, the worse the resolution for a given mirror size. However, we can penetrate the dust deeper with Miri, so there's always pros and cons. The darkest areas in this Miri image, such as the lower right corner, are the densest areas of dust in the nebula that even these wavelengths can't penetrate. In addition to imaging the nebula, we've now seen a spectrum from the near-infrared spectrograph NERSPEC. This tells us about the chemical makeup of the stars and gas, and could also tell us how old the nebula is and how many generations of stars have formed within it. In particular, NERSPEC was focused on what we thought was a bubble starting to form around an older star in the cluster. 
However, the spectrum has shown us that what we thought was totally wrong. It turns out this is actually a very young star, only just emerging from its pillar, and it still has a cocoon of dust around it. In this image, we can see the light from this region broken down by wavelength. We see atomic hydrogen, shown here in blue, and an indicator of radiation, and we see it's in the star itself, but not in the immediate surroundings. It does appear again further out, but the bubble itself contains more molecular hydrogen and complex hydrocarbons. This tells us that rather than a bubble being blasted out by the star in the center, it's actually a pillar being radiated by a nearby star cluster. The central star is just too young to have made its own cavity, and it remains shrouded in dust. Thanks so much for making it this far in the video. Please subscribe if you're new, and let me know in the comments below what you think of all of the images coming from Webb. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!